So one week ago, I posted Faces of NYC. It's the video I made after spending this entire summer in New York. It's by far the most time I've ever put into a video and definitely the proudest I've been of something that I've made. And it's gotten a great response so far and I really appreciate that from all of you. Among all of the nice things you guys have said about the video, I've also received a lot of questions about it and requests for a video breaking it down. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. First, I'm gonna show you kind of the before and after type breakdown where I have the final video over here on the right, the original raw unedited footage over here on the left, and then my timeline in Premiere at the bottom of the frame. And I've also made the music a good bit quieter so that the sound effects can kind of stand out a bit more. And then after that, we're gonna go through the entire timeline of the video, just scrub through it and go through and kind of commentate it a bit for you and talk to you a bit about the stories behind some of the shots and sequences and just my thought process around organizing and executing the video. Yeah, this is gonna be a pretty long one, but uh, I hope you enjoy it. Here we go. Almost everyone comes through New York, but most visitors only catch a glimpse of it. Airport layovers and family vacations just aren't long enough to see this entire city. In fact, you probably couldn't see it in a lifetime. Because New York isn't one place. It's like a shape with different faces, each one unique from the rest. And just when you think you know where you are, you could turn a corner and find yourself somewhere completely different. Broadway crosses Fifth Avenue stands the Flatiron Building, one of the first skyscrapers. For over three centuries, a steady stream of men, women, and children followed the beacon of liberty which this light symbolizes. Here in the very center of the city is a beautiful park, a peaceful retreat from the turmoil. Well, of course, of nothing is 100%. Well, I wouldn't go investing every penny. Wall Street was luring the young and ambitious.
What was very unique about this shoot was that I captured this footage on a 10 week long trip, about two and a half months spent in New York as opposed to the usual one week that I would spend somewhere at the most creating a travel video like this. So I had a huge variety of footage. I knew it wouldn't be possible or do the city justice to try and take all of that footage and put it into one individual style, try and kind of force all of this footage to look like one kind of look or vibe of the city. So what I did was I broke it up into five different sequences with completely different styles and to give you a completely different vibe of the city that I experienced while I was there. We start out with this daytime sequence to show the kind of grittier texture of the streets of New York. That then moves into a moodier sequence to show some rainy scenes around Chinatown and Koreatown followed by this sequence in black and white that shows a lot of the historic places in New York. The Flatiron, the castle in Central Park, places that have been around for hundreds of years. That's followed up and contrasted by this very futuristic sequence that shows some newer kind of futuristic modern spots and buildings around New York. And finally this sequence at the end that kind of just slows down and shows you how people in New York can get into nature a little bit within the city and kind of escape from the noise of the city. I decided to make it super obvious that these were contrasting sequences by defining them by color. So the first one is very orange, then we go into that moody sequence and it's very dark and gray and cool colors. Then the sequence after that showing the historic spots is black and white, completely different from anything else in the video. The futuristic sequence is completely blue. And finally, that sequence at the end of the sunrise is very like pastel, colorful imagery. Having the sequences look very dramatically different also came along with the challenge of transitioning between them. So you can see in here I've used the lightning a couple times to transition between sequences and also this color fade where I'm fading from color to black and white and then from black and white back to color to indicate a transition from one sequence to another. So let's start out by taking a look at this intro and I wanted this to basically represent what I was talking about in the voiceover. So you can see here we start outside of the city and then get closer through these shots that are kind of pushing in then going across the bridge. Then we've got this shot of the spinning cube and this shot is pretty special to me because it was in the East Village where I stayed for almost all of the time in New York. About seven of those 10 weeks were spent in the East Village. This became kind of our home base while we were staying in the city. I had the idea to get a shot like this for a while while I was there, but I ended up getting it kind of spontaneously and almost by accident just a few days before I left. I was on the subway and past the station that this cube is located at. I decided randomly to just get off and try and attempt to get this shot. And luckily a couple people came by and decided to spin the cube around while I was there. And I'm really glad I did because I think this adds a lot to kind of conveying the message that I'm trying to get across in the voiceover visually and having visuals that tie in to the concept behind the entire video. And I believe when I got this shot was actually the last time that I visited that area of the city before I left. So I'm really glad that I decided to get this and that I was able to have this shot and have, you know, a kind of special part of the city be included in the video. Then we've got a sequence of a few shots here where I wanted it to seem like the subway was taking us around different parts of the city. And then finally this hyperlapse of the Flatiron building, which even when I shot this, I had the idea of it representing kind of moving from one face to another and seeing something different as you turn that corner. Then we move into this kind of daytime grungy textured orange sequence. And as you can see with the color grade here, I've basically just killed everything except the reds and oranges. There's a little bit of blue and kind of desaturated green, but it's really supposed to be just predominantly red, orange, and gray. Another editing choice I made here that's really not characteristic of my usual video style at all is that I chose not to diffuse the highlights. And that's something I do on almost every shot. I take the highlights and blur them out. But here I chose not to do that just for this one single sequence to kind of show a bit more of that rough, sharper texture as opposed to smoothing it out. Then we have our first transition, this time lapse of the Empire State Building where we can see the storm rolling in. And this is completely fake, I have to admit. You can go back earlier in the video and see the time lapse that I took it from and the clouds don't look anything like this. I basically just took it, sky replaced it, kind of keyframed the colors to change and get darker, and then added some fake lightning in 
to create this transition. That then moves into this moody sequence around Chinatown and Koreatown, where I've basically done a pretty similar thing with the color grading, where I've kind of killed everything except the reds and oranges in the shot, except here, I've added a bit to it by kind of cooling it off and darkening the footage a lot. And while on the sequence before this, I decided not to diffuse the highlights to give it that harsher textured look, here I absolutely diffuse the hell out of the highlights for the purpose of making it look as if there was water on the lens while I was filming. There's also a few additional sky replacements in this sequence, for example this shot where the sky was overexposed, so I just keyed it out and then tracked in some clouds to give it that moody vibe and make it more obvious that this is taking place during a storm. This shot is also a sky replacement which then leads into a couple hyperlapses and we see that color fade and we're now in the historic sequence, completely black and white color grade showing some historic spots around the city. Believe it or not, this was without a doubt the trickiest sequence in this entire video to edit because there's a lot more effects in it than you might realize. For example, this shot, I'll put it side to side on the screen right now, but this street in this shot of the Flatiron Building in the Financial District is not a cobblestone street. It's just a regular black pavement street and there's kind of a giant metal grate in the shot, which I figured didn't look particularly historic. I just kind of preferred that cobblestone look for the financial district, so I added that cobblestone street back in. I took it from another shot, masked the ground out of the original shot, and then just tracked it on back there, and it turned out pretty well. Just to use this shot further as an example, I also went through with Content Aware Fill in After Effects and did a couple of manual like mask and track clone stamps to cover up some street signs and a car in the background. I just thought those made it super obvious that this was not an old historic setting, so I just got rid of them to hopefully make it seem a bit more like we're taking the viewer back in time, as cheesy as that sounds. Throughout this sequence, I'm also using a lot of old voiceovers behind all of the clips. There's one of FDR talking about the Statue of Liberty. I downloaded an old newsreel from like 1920 something about the city. Uh, I took a clip from The Great Gatsby. Just having fun with the old sampled voiceovers along with the sound design here like the trolley, the propeller plane, the steamboats to give it that old New York feel and have you hear some things that you wouldn't hear in the city in 2019 but you might have in 1919. So yeah, instead of just slapping like a black and white filter on this and calling it a day, I really wanted to take it a bit further and give it more of an immersive feeling like we're taking the viewer back to that time period. Then we completely juxtapose these two sequences and transition from the older historic spots to the very futuristic modern sequence of this video. I've used the color fade to transition from black and white to blue, but I've also chosen a couple specific shots to use to do that. So this first shot of the Fearless Girl statue across the street from the stock exchange I thought represented kind of moving into the future socially, like gender equality on Wall Street, something absolutely unheard of in this time period that we're still very much moving towards and not even close to there yet. So I thought that absolutely represented kind of New York moving into the future. And then the High Line, which is an old um, trolley line that's been kind of refurbished and turned into uh, just a cool like walkway that has a lot of like newer, very modern apartments by the side of it. It's a very futuristic looking part of the city that used to be a trolley line. So it really represents taking the old and turning it into something very new and futuristic. As you can see, the color grade in this sequence is all blue. Literally what I did to color grade this was I took the footage, I turned it black and white, and then I used an effect called Hue Colorize that just turned it all one color and turned it this kind of tealish blue color and then graded it from there. And a lot of these shots didn't look particularly natural if they were 100% blue. So you can see here on shots like this where we've got the orange restaurant uh, that I've masked out and put back in. And also most of the shots that had leaves, plants, or trees in them, I've masked that part of the frame out and then put it back on a separate layer and put it at say 50% opacity to just bring back a bit of that color so it's not completely blue because blue trees just looks a little bit off I found. So a lot of these shots are just completely color shifted to be entirely blue and then I've taken those those smaller areas if you look closer and masked them out and put them back 
in their original color. That sequence ends off with this time lapse shot from the Manhattan Bridge showing the Brooklyn Bridge and the New York skyline, including the One World Trade Center. And this is pretty much the money shot of the video. It's the longest shot by far. It's like 20 seconds long, I believe. And it's easily one of the hardest ones to shoot. I was out shooting on the Manhattan Bridge, seeing this view of the skyline. I saw that the sunset was just absolutely amazing and knew I needed to get a time lapse of it. The only problem, I didn't have my intervalometer in my bag. So instead of just setting my camera up with the intervalometer and having it take photos at intervals automatically, what I had to do was set a timer on my phone and just watch it and every five seconds I would take a photo. Just press the shutter button every five seconds. I stood there for I believe about 45 minutes to shoot this time lapse. I did edit this shot a good bit. I reversed it in post to turn it from a sunset into a sunrise to fit the story and the flow of the video. I also shifted the colors to make it a lot more dramatic that it was going from blue from that night look to very orange warm look in the sunrise setting. And I also added in the sun. Unfortunately, yes, the sun is fake. I basically just wanted it to match the two shots at the end where you can see the sun just barely peeking through a couple buildings in the skyline. But yeah, out of all the shots in this video, this is definitely one of the ones, if not the one that I'm the most proud of, just mostly because of how much went into it. And then finally, the last sequence of the video is this sunrise sequence that I basically intended to show how people can escape the noise of the city. So it's mostly parks. There's a bit of Central Park and a bit of Brooklyn Bridge Park uh, in Brooklyn across the river. Funny story, this was actually originally the entire video concept was to make a video showing how people can escape from the noise of the city. But I basically decided after a while that I didn't have enough footage that was centered around that. In order to make that idea really come to life, I would have had to very much script it out, storyboard it, shot list it, and really center the shoot around that. And that just wasn't gonna be much fun to do. And I wanted to see more of the city than just that one aspect. And I guess I'm glad in the grand scheme of things that I decided to go for something a bit less focused because I feel like this concept moving around the city and showing a bunch of different aspects just has a lot more depth to it than trying to give it one particular focus. All that being said, now that we've made it through, I want to give you kind of an FAQ about this video and answer a few questions that I saw a lot of comments about when the video went up a week ago. What I got the most questions about was of course gear as usual. So to give you those answers, I shot this video on a Canon EOS R and I used a Tokina 11 to 16, a Sigma 35, a Tamron 45 and a Tamron 85 which I got at B&H in New York after breaking the 45. There was no drone in here. Uh, I saw some questions about that and it is in fact true that New York is, I believe the second most illegal place to fly a drone in the United States, right behind Washington DC. So any aerial looking footage that you see is either from a fly nylon helicopter ride or a rooftop hyperlapse or just a rooftop shot with a telephoto lens. The hyperlapses I shot all using just handheld photos, no gimbals, just holding my camera, taking a photo, focusing on one point, and then taking a step and taking another photo. I made a video all about it, uh, which you can watch by clicking right up here. It's a little dated, be warned, but I think it still gets the concept across. And then to smooth those out, I either just used warp stabilizer, or if that didn't work, then I would go into After Effects and manually track one or two points to stabilize them that way. For time lapses, the process was pretty straightforward. I just used an intervalometer and put the camera on aperture priority and then used a plugin in post called Flicker Free that makes it to where it doesn't flicker, which is something you can usually get when you're shooting on aperture priority. I got a lot of questions about grading and people assuming that I graded this in DaVinci Resolve. That's actually not true. I did all of the grading for this video completely inside of Premiere Pro just using Lumetri Color. And I've got a tutorial on the futuristic blue color grade coming next week. So stick around for that. But until then, I think that's just about everything I wanted to talk about with this video. If you haven't seen the original video, don't know why you would sit through this, but uh, yeah, go check it out right up here. If you have seen it, uh, sick. Thank you, I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed this video as well. And if you did, do feel free to share your support 
by leaving a like on the video, sharing it with your friends, or even subscribing to my channel. I upload new filmmaking tutorials every single week, but that's all for now. Keep creating, and I'll see you in the